Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 28 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I did a little bit of work between episodes, just kind of expanded my OLA generators, so nothing too fancy. All I did really was set it up so that there's uh, liquid and energy conduits coming out the back of this thing, uh, and then obviously the same connections that we had before. So we've got the 5 million storage here, right? This guy can do 5 million uh, RF storage. This guy can do 25 million, which is cool. Um, my main plan for the most part is basically like this guy is really just kind of like a buffer that will always send out. And as a matter of fact, I might even do away with this capacitor bank. I don't know. I haven't figured out how I want to handle this, but we'll see. We'll come up with something cool, I'm sure. Um, that's kind of a rough idea. And then uh, we've obviously got the power monitor here and everything. And then the laser's kind of distributing to my different buildings. So my power system's doing pretty well. My farm's doing pretty well. Um, I'm not sure exactly how much RF attack I'm getting, but, you know, 350 times 9, right? Or whatever it is. So that's decent for sure. Let's take a look at, I might want to change up some stuff too, because there's a few other things that I have in mind. Um, I think I'd like to get into some automated mining right now, because resource-wise, I'm doing okay. Like, there's some things I have a lot of, like redstone and coal. There's some stuff I don't have that much of, like gold and iron. Like, if you think about it, I really don't have that much gold or iron. Like, I just went mining last episode in the deep dark and did a little bit more between uh, now and then, but there's absolutely some things that I could do with some more of. Um, so let's look into, first off, let's pop into our basement and see what our storage situation is looking at. Uh, not bad. So I've got a 16 and a 4K in there. And we're currently using up around 15,400-ish of the 20K. So not bad. We can probably use another 16K soon. Um, if I was going to set up an automated quarry system, and there are many ways to go about this in the pack, I would probably want to do it in the deep dark, which means I'm going to need to get power over there, and we're also going to have to get items back from the deep dark. Items back should be easy. I can just use my ender pouch, right? Simple ender chest, hook that up in the, in the deep dark, and then we're good to go. Um, that is not going to be too bad, I don't think. Yeah, we can totally do that. Wool in a chest, shouldn't be a problem. Chest, start. Wool, can probably get some string, I'm sure. Yeah, that's not a problem. Cool. There we go. Now we've got our item storage from the dark. For power, I think there's really only one way to cross-dimensionally send power, and that's a dimensional transceiver, uh, courtesy of Ender.io. Pretty sure these are my only options, right? Uh, in order to get this, we're gonna need an Ender Resonator, which requires an Enderman's head. Uh, and we're going to need some electrical steel, some fused quartz, an ender crystal, an octodic capacitor. The ender crystal is a vibrant crystal from Ender.io with a soul vial of an enderman in a soul binder. So lots of things involved in making a dimensional transceiver. Soul vial, enderman, yikes. Um, so we're going to need enderman heads as well. That's, that's tricky. We have one Enderman's head, but I know I'm going to want more because there's lots of machines that I wouldn't mind using the Enderman's head for. Uh, oh, that's going to be tricky. So I wonder if I can capture an evil Enderman, one that would be harassing me around my base. Because I've seen a couple poking their heads into here now and then. I suspect that there are two tribes of Endermen. One that wants to cause no problems, but a couple rogues who want to come by and cause me some issues, poke around my base, steal a few blocks here and there. Those Endermen, I wouldn't mind capturing one of them. That might be the plan for today. So let's get a soul vial. This guy, which is gonna require all kinds of stuff that I don't have, fused quartz and solarium. All right, so that's not a problem. Quartz, uh, we can get fused quartz, easy peasy. And solarium also is just gold. Do we have the recipe for solarium taught? How about we teach that? We'll pop into our basement um, and we'll say, hey you, clear out this thing. Gold, check. And then fused quartz, I wanna say it's like four. What am I doing here? That was a big time derp. That's not at all what I wanted to do. Let's clear this out. You two 
Ah, we can do it up here. Alloy smeltery in alloy mode. Should be relatively quick. This is 60 RF attack, so that could be a little bit faster if I wanted it to be. Cool. And this isn't too bad either. Fuse quartz, yeah, so it is four. All right, so there's your solarium pattern. And then four of you yields a fused quartz. And these can go down here on the one that's flagged as alloy smeltery mode. Beautiful. So if I asked for two more quartz, then we'd be in good shape for our soul vial. Nice. So we just have to capture an evil enderman. And then what we'll do is use him to spawn more endermen. Uh, for that, we're going to need a powered spawner. Uh, let's see, what other spawner options do we have here? We have these spawner shards from actually additions. This allows us to do a spawner changer, which isn't a bad thing. Um, once a spawner in the world is broken, it will always drop one shard. Okay, cool. And then spawner, let's see, I think that's an item that doesn't use RF, right? Um, manipulate the mobs that spawn to spawn. This can be accomplished by first of all picking up the desired mob to spawn with the changer, killing it in the process. Next, the changer can be right clicked with the spawner, causing the spawner to be changed and the changer itself to be destroyed. Cool. Gotcha. So that's one way to go about it. We could make it so that like vanilla spawners have stuff. We can also use the Ender IO powered spawner system, which is a pretty good method of going about and making yourself a spawner. Um, we're just going to need a few components. So we're going to first need a broken spawner. Um, yeah, I think I know what I'm going to do. So have we found any broken spawners? We have. I've got one with spiders and one with zombies. Nice. So spiders, I don't foresee myself, or zombies for that matter. Neither of these mobs do I see needing to spawn ever. So let's go with the spider one, right? Um, we're going to need not a slice and spice, but a soul binder. Let's get one of these guys. Boy, it requires an Enderman head. Great. I'm using the thing that I need more of. That's cool. Uh, machine chassis. Okay. Let's see. What do we have here? I could use a machine chassis. Start. And solarium times four. So while that stuff's going on, it does require the Enderman head. You know what else I'm going to get? To make it so that I get more head drops, I'm going to get a nice sword from Ender.io. We'll check into that for sure. Um, we know how to get coal dust, right? Let me get one of those. I only have 10 obsidian. I could really use more of this. There we go. Cool. While we're at it, I want to teach it you, you, and you. I should figure out a way to automate obsidian. It shouldn't be too hard. So this, this, and this makes a nice little sword. Well, it makes a nice bit of metal that we're going to use to make a sword. And probably other things as well. It makes dark steel, which is actually a really nice... You can make armor from it. You can make some tools from it. It's really pretty slick and good stuff. And I think I'd like to have them because my armor situation, it's seen better days, right? Like I've done better with armor in my life. Not today. Uh, so the soul binder, so it's going to allow us. And let's get ourselves energy conduits here. Hooray! This allows you to convert a spawner type using the soul vial of an enemy. And this will make it so that we can spawn Endermen at will. And they'll be clones of the original evil Endermen. So I'm not going to feel too bad about doing that. Um, we're also going to need it to be dark time. And I wouldn't mind... Kind of... I wouldn't mind. Um, how do I want to set this up? It's getting dark out, so we're going to have to go find one of those Endermen who likes to harass me around my base. 
Uh, and we're also going to need to set up a place for this to exist. Maybe in this hill on the other side of this river. So it's like far enough away from my base that it's not a big deal, but not too far that it's like a hassle to get to. You know what I mean? So I feel like that might be a good approach. While that's happening, there's one more thing I want to get. I want to get another piece of dark steel. We can hear all the processing going on down there. Nice. At some point I might want to swap this, well, not swap it out for a sag mill, but have a sag mill down here. Like, because we definitely want the sand and I'll probably use the, the flower patterns down there. So let's make the ender. This nifty sword right here. Nice. This thing is cool. Uh, the reason it's cool is because you can upgrade it with a vibrant crystal, among other things. And what it does is it increases skull and ender pearl drops. Nice. So let's get a vibrant alloy. Start up that process. Uh, do I have an anvil? Have I made an anvil at some point? I don't think I have. I don't think I've ever crafted an anvil in this series thus far. And if I have, uh, I don't remember doing it. So we're going to make one. Cool. You turn into this. Now we can get ourselves a vibrant crystal. While we're here, I want to get an octodic capacitor, uh, a double layered capacitor, and that'll be good for now. So what we can do, place our anvil down. Hooray! Um, sword plus vibrant crystal with the cost of four experience gives me the ender, and it's now empowered. So instead of using durability, it'll use energy, right? Dun, 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 dun. And we can charge this guy right up in here. Sweet. See the energy bar filling up? 100,000 RF. That's what it can hold. Um, now, the other thing you can do is you can give it capacitors. Okay. Um, so we are probably in the process of crafting our octodic capacitor right now. Let's get this guy started. A basic capacitor. on here for the cost of, I think, a few levels. It's probably like six-ish. I know it's not too bad. Yeah, six. Nice. That'll empower it up some more. Each time you empower your dark, uh, dark iron stuff, uh, what you'll get is more damage absorbed instead of durability. So each level of this uh, capacitor upgrade that we're putting on here is better, right? So we'll also want our double and our octodick. Okay, we'll get... 8-ish for the double. Yeah. And how much for the Octodic? 12. Nice. Now this sword is pretty awesome uh, because it absorbs 85% of the damage uh, that would otherwise be absorbed. Um, increases skull and ender pearl drops. Enderman can't teleport once hit. Extra damage and speed when powered. All kinds of cool stuff, right? Um, so this is a pretty nice sword. Uh, I also wouldn't mind maybe throwing looting on here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Looting would be good because it would increase your drops even further. Uh, let's get an enchanter. So this is going to require a book and four of that dark steel. Okay. We'll let that kick off while I think about how I'm going to do stuff. The other thing we're going to have to do is find an enderman. Lurking around my base, causing trouble. There's one. Ha ha. I knew there would be an evil, sneaky Enderman hiding around here. Gotcha, buddy. You're mine now. Evil Endermen are evil. It's the lesson of the day. On my to-do list. We're lighting up this area a little better. See, iron armor is just not cutting it for me right now. Alright, so we've got the Enderman Soul Vial. Uh, we've got the Ender Sword. I'm making the Dark Iron so that we can get ourselves an Enchanter. Sweet. The enchanter is a super nice item 
do, do, do. Putting away all the junk I don't need at the moment. Uh, the reason it's a super nice item is because it allows you to make enchanted books. You get to specify which enchanted book you want. You can see the recipes over here. What I'm going to want is looting, and that's going to require... Quartz gets you sharpness, I think, right? Yeah, sharpness. For looting, we're going to want some kind of skulls. Yeah. So I should have some zombie heads. I think three of them. And some lapis. Just get a stack. I don't know what we're going to need experience-wise, though. Uh, 27 levels. 27 levels will yield. Beat it, zombie. I don't want to hear your noise. Uh, and a book. Because me, personally, I've always been kind of, I don't know, not a fan of the vanilla enchanting system. It's just so random. Like, you could be really lucky, or you could be really unlucky. I don't like that. Let's get a stack of you. I could always use more paper. Cool. Enchanted book and quill. Nice. You plus the three zombie heads and the lapis will get us enchanted book looting three. Nice. I just need 27 levels. Okay. Boom. Nice. That's cool. And now we can combine these two for an enchantment level cost of six. Not that. The book. Nice. Looting three. Now I think I found a book. Sharpness five. Remember I found that in one of those dungeons a while ago? I also found looting two, which is meh. An XP boost, which is eh, not bad. Um, oh, <laughs> totally found the ender. Uh, looks like I already had one of those. Whoops. And books. I should really, uh, I should pick this chest up and import chest it, shouldn't I? Yeah, let's do that. Before I forget. It's been on my to-do list forever, and I just never got around to doing it. Moving wand, check. You're coming downstairs with me in a minute. Uh, what I'd like to do is have sharpness on here. Uh, I guess that's not how you use these. You combine them like this. I assumed that I just did that. I might be wrong. Ancient tome, huh? Oh, ancient tomes let you raise a level. I like that. I might want to try that. We're going to need a sharpness book. Um, let's get quartz. So I know I'm going to need a lot of it. Let's get another book. So what's sharpness looking like? Not you two. 36 levels for sharpness. Five. Check. Now apparently I can combine these two books to get a sharpness six upgrade. That's the rumor that I'm hearing now. So is it something like that? Sharpness six. Look at that. That's kind of cool. That's going to require 35 levels though. Thirty-five levels to combine these two. Good thing I've been storing all this experience this long, huh? Uh, and now, if I wanted to combine these two, it's going to require thirty-five levels to combine them. Well, that's a little bit sane. Cool. But I've got sharpness six on this thing, so that's pretty insanely cool. I like that. It's got looting three and sharpness six. That's probably better than this. This has a total of what twelve. Attack damage? I don't know. Let's see if it's going to really tell me what the actual attack damage is. But I feel like this sword's going to be, like, really nice for me. I might make this my main sword. It's kind of cool. All right. Um, so we've got Awesome Sword. We've got Soul Vial of Enderman. Let's get this, the Broken Spawner. Combined with the Enderman Soul. That's going to require eight levels. The Soul Binder requires experience. I remember that. If you're careful about your level usage, it's actually not too bad. 
Go, Soulbinder, go. Actually, it takes a little while. Having a capacitor in there would speed it up. But it's actually... We're using 500 RF and tech to do this at the current speed it is now. It's actually struggling a little bit to uh, maintain the power. Wow. It's brutal. Uses a lot of power to do that. Uh, while that's going, let's get a powered spawner. Powered spawner. It's going to pretty much require a couple vibrant crystals. So let's get a couple vibrant alloys. Four electrical steel and a machine chassis. And then um, there was one more thing, a Z-Logic controller, right? So that's a zombie head, two solarium, two silicon, and redstone. So two silicon, redstone, zombie head, and two solarium. Cool. Is this thing slowly but surely still moving? Slowly but surely. He's struggling to get the uh, RF that he needs. Even though we've got a 25 million right here. You know what I think we should do? Let's maybe look at upgrading these conduits to a higher tier. Because the problem is the conduits can't transfer the power fast enough. Like, if I did this... Just as a demonstration. See? That's our problem. The conduits are too weak down there. We're gonna have to upgrade that. Solarium. Check. Cool. How you doing, Powered Spawner? So we should now have everything we need for a Powered Spawner. That's right, we need the two Vibrant Crystals, which we should have the stuff for. Just need to craft them. Yay! Powered Spawner. Sweet. Um, so now, in, see how it says empty? You have to combine it with a broken spawner and an anvil to set the type of mob that it's going to spawn. And because we're specifying that we want to spawn Endermen with this thing, that's how it's going to work out. Uh, let me borrow real quick just to speed this up. This is going to, like, all of a sudden take a thousand RF and tick to run, but that's fine. It'll just, you know, speed things up for me. Nice. Okay. Nice. So we got our empty soul vial back, and we've got a broken Enderman spawner. Beautiful. Let's, uh... Where's my Yetta wrench? Should have had it on me. I must have dropped it here by mistake. Yep, there it is. Because I was moving that chest. All the to-do lists. So, to do, upgrade the conduits down there. Uh, so that's good. So we've got that, we're cool. Let's combine these guys in the anvil. So this plus this, enchantment cost 16. Suddenly we have a powered spawner that spawns Enderman. Nice, and we broke our anvil. Ha, <laughs> cool. So that's pretty good. Um, now we've got our powered spawner for Enderman. We've got our soul vial, that'll go away. We've got our energy conduits. We've got these energy conduits. Uh, this sword I'm actually gonna put away for now because I don't see any reason to hang on to that over this thing. Sharpness six, you're killing me. Looting three, awesome. Uh, pretty nice sword we got there. Um, moving wand, we can go downstairs and real quick sort this out. It is illegal to take this block. It's weird. Do, 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 do. All right, so all that stuff gets sucked in. All this in the name of automatic quarrying. So where am I going to set up this thing? I want to set up like a cool, nifty little mob spawning area. So let me figure that out and we'll be back. 
All right, guys, I want to introduce you to Sneaky Blocks. These are from Dark Utilities, and they can be super useful. Um, then there's the Sneaky False Block. These guys are basically Sneaky Blocks plus wool. Cool. Um, I was trying to figure out a cool way to go about doing what I want to do, and I think I've come up with what I found I think will be cool. Um, so what I wanted to have is this to be my mob spawning room. Looks pretty good, right? Uh, if we hit show range here, you'll see this thing has a pretty decent range, but I've placed it in such a way that it just can spawn an enderman or anything, really, anywhere inside this room. Not bad, not bad. I think this will work. Um, so what I'm gonna want is to be able to get in and out of this room relatively easily, but mobs not to be able to get out of the room easily. So what I'm thinking is to use sneaky false blocks. What they are are blocks that look trans or, or look solid, but are not. Sneaky false block. Uh, you can also right click them with any block that you have to take on that texture. So in this case, I'm gonna use quite clear glass and tell me how this looks. Cool, right? So uh, they're false. Now, the only question I have is whether or not Endermen will think that they're false and whether or not they'll try to come through this door or, you know, whatever. I don't, I think that they will see this block as solid. I think they will. So if that's the case, then we have a cool little room. I like it. Um, so with that in mind, all we really need now is power. So what I might want to do is get myself a laser hookup right about here. Let's see if I could, uh, if I could get this guy in a position that's good. I'm thinking... I made myself a phantom energy face and um, an advanced energy laser relay and a laser wrench. This looks like it's going to be too far, right? Yeah, too far. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Let's like bring it a little bit closer. You. Yeah, laser connected. Nice. Okay, that'll do. And then we can uh, cover these things up a little bit. And what we'll do is we'll hook up this guy to this guy. Connection is fine and working. You're filling up with power. Nice. This uses 1,600 RF per tick, which is a lot of RF. Um, that's a real lot of RF. Hopefully we can manage it. Um, if not, we might have to do some more shenanigans. We shall see. All right, guys, I'm gonna try and make something fancy. We will see uh, how this works out for us. So uh, to make Tyrion, I just need this. Cool. I've got my chisel. So let's turn that into like these guys. Maybe some of this, you know, I'm gonna get Maybe another 32 to be, we'll see what this looks like. Uh, do I have my swapping wand? So what if we'll go with the floor as this one? illegal to swap this block we must have updated the mod <laughs> and it is illegal to swap many blocks now we'll do single blocks at a time for the rest of these we're gonna need a little bit more Tyrion on the floor I don't know I just looked I kind of wanted something like really dark because it's an enderman spawner room right I don't know how much I love that pattern, but we'll see. What do you guys think? The other option would be something like this. Does that look cooler? I want to say that that looks cooler. That's what I'm going to say. So let's do that one for the floor. I definitely like that one a little bit better. Cool. And then you guys can turn into this for the walls, I'm thinking. That looks kind of neat, right? We're definitely going to need more of this stuff. I 
don't know how much of this. Probably gonna need more. Let's get another stack of it. Luckily, the good thing about this is that chisel blocks like this Tyrion are usually pretty cheap to make in large amounts. So I want it to be like really just in here. That looks good, right? I think it looks cool. Hope you guys do too. A little more, a little bit more, a little bit more. 32 more should be enough. See, I'm trying to make things look nice. I'm not saying I'm succeeding, I'm just saying I'm trying. Looks good, right? Isn't that a neat Enderman spawner room? I like it. All right, let's take a nap and then we're gonna try this thing out. So now what I'm gonna do is paint up a couple conduit facades. One, I had two in there that were painted something else, so I'm just repainting them. Um, and what I'm thinking is they will go here and we'll have insulated redstone conduits going into the floor. And then we'll just make our way over to that powered spawner with them. So we've already phantom faced the power, right? So that's cool. And Tyrion, and we're set. Look at that. Super nice looking, right? Uh, let me just place a lever on this thing. And this should activate our Enderman spawner, which you can see it's running because there's flame particles coming out of it. Cool. Uh, and then, you know, turn it off, and it's no longer running. See? It gets stuck at that 42% progress bar. Super cool. What are you doing here? Really? That was close. Because for some reason... It didn't hurt him. Uh, so testing, testing one, two, three. Enderman, how do you feel about being in this room? Put this door. Are we cool? Are we good? So we're totally using 1,600 RF a tick. We are keeping up with the power demands, which is nice. He doesn't seem to be interested in leaving. Wow, he, he hurts. He hurts just a little bit, doesn't he? But I got some ender pearls from it. Nice. Um, I wouldn't have minded a few more, like another head, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take what we can get for now. Uh, we'll put away some stuff that we don't need at the moment. Uh, Enderman galore, hello. So you can't get out of there, right? Oh, that is awesome, they see it as a solid block. That's something I wanted to test. And it totally seems to be true. All right, I'm turning this off for the moment just so I can heal up a little bit. We definitely need better armor. And we're going to have to need to work on that. Uh, like, we can automate killing these guys. You know what's funny is I'm having trouble getting in here. We can totally automate killing them, but I want to kill them with this because it increases head drops, right? Beautiful. Hey, we got two Enderman heads. Awesome. All right. So I'm gonna leave that thing turned off for the time being. Look at you guys stealing dirt already. You've been in there for five seconds and you already stole a piece of dirt. Come on, guys. <sighs> Told you that was an evil Enderman, but we got ahead, so I'm happy. All right, so let's do this. Let's wrap up the episode here and we will come back next episode and we will do some other cool stuff. So we can recharge this thing. He's got plenty of, he has his own durability still. Remember, only 85% of the damage is absorbed, but we can repair it, so it's not a big deal. So we'll come back next episode, 
we've got some good things going on here. We've got laser power working. We've got uh, an Enderman spawner. We can increase this with capacitors, by the way. Um, the double layers and the octadex can totally go in here, but it'll boost the RF usage a lot. I think with an octadex capacitor, it's something like 10,000 RF a tick, which we just know. Like, no, not going to happen uh, with our current power generation. We might have to amp it up if we really want to get more by way of Enderman spawning. Um, but we can totally add other spawners to this room. So, like, if we want to get to a point where we're spawning blazes, for example, all I need to do is place, like, another blaze spawner, like, right there and another one like here for this side and we can have different levers and different controls for all kinds of different spawning things right um we'll probably want a wither skeleton spawner at some point and by the way pro tip looting three sharpness six totally awesome for killing withermen wither wither skeletons because increased head drops works with the wither skeletons as well so for now daryl 20 signing off hope you guys enjoyed the episode as always take it easy